Michael's 22. He lives in Nuremberg, southeast Germany, suffering from spina bifida. He's been in a wheelchair since a child. Nikos lives in Thessalonica, northern Greece. At 28, he was diagnosed with Guillain-Barre syndrome, a disease which has paralyzed his lower limbs. George here also lives in Thessalonica. Now 44, he suffered a motorbike accident 11 years ago. They all have similar mobility impairments and face the same problems when moving around their towns. Especially here in the historic centre of Nuremberg, there are a lot of cobblestones and there are some hilly areas. You have to be careful, especially where there are large cobblestones, that your front wheel doesn't get stuck. In that case, you can easily fall down. Very often I need help moving around in Thessalonica. There is much traffic and sometimes pavements are too narrow for my wheelchair. They all dream of a solution to these shared challenges. And that's why the three have been involved in Ask IT, a European research project aimed at providing mobility impaired people with a greater autonomy and independence. The major goal of the project is to enable users with any kind of disability, but of course also without, to be able to go from point A to point B being able to do anything any one of us would like to do. Plus, ASCII system is able to run not only on PCs, not only on PDAs, on intelligent phones. We are able to run 80% of the simple, normal, everyday chip phones, even with maps. It's 10 a.m. and Michael's briefed by engineers about how best to use a personalized navigator in downtown Nuremberg. The software is asked to help him reach a nearby museum, which is up a hill, by the easiest and most accessible way. We have started the routing process and the software is trying to create the easiest way to arrive at the destination. The device is using the built-in GPS module. With the GPS data, the software can find out where exactly he is in Nuremberg and calculates the way to the place that he wants to go to. Meanwhile, in Thessalonica, the same experience is repeated. A group of mobility-impaired people is asked to use mobile phones and handheld computers to find a downtown restaurant well adapted to their needs. It's overseen by an engineer experienced in interaction between humans and computers. We actually need the participation of users at all stages of the life cycle of the development of technologies, of future technologies, to make sure that uh, these are designed for all, are accessible and usable in under different contexts of uses and for diverse user populations. Nikos and George have planned to meet at the same restaurant but get there by different ways. Nikos takes his own car and is guided all the way through. It is a personalized navigator, so it doesn't show the shorter or faster way, but the way that is more appropriate for me. For instance, where I can find more easily parking places. Meanwhile, George uses public transport. The software tells him not only the right bus to take, but also about its timetable and other useful information. Before my accident, I worked as a bus driver. Back then, buses were not so well adapted to mobility-impaired people. Now they are. But we need to know, for instance, how close they stop to our final destination. While Nikos parked his car, George arrives at the bus stop only 100 metres away. Once they meet, they look for the restaurant together. In Nuremberg, Michael's searching for the museum. The maps he's using to cross the city have been updated by a company which is special in more ways than one. Most of the programmers are disabled people themselves. 
They know firsthand the kind of useful services mobility impaired people need, according to the company's CEO. The strong point of those co-workers is that on the one hand they live and work with that handicap and on the other hand they can understand the problems disabled people face on the internet. For example, someone who is colorblind or who is deaf or who has mobility impaired problems knows what kind of help he needs on the internet and as a computer programmer he can provide that service more accurately. Michael started climbing the steep streets that lead to the museum. Every time he asks for detailed information, like distances, his request is automatically sent to this building outside Nuremberg. This is where a huge server delivers the data he needs. Here we're at the heart of the Ask IT network, where all software is run from. Phone calls, Internet, GPS services, video calls, video conferences. All this is managed from this room. All Ask IT users, independent from where they are in Europe, are addressed via this network. They can use all applications, like for example airports, train stations, museums, restaurants, cinemas, from wherever they are. After about half an hour of a sometimes difficult journey, Michael arrives at the museum he was looking for, the house where painter Albrecht Dürer lived and worked. Thanks to high tech, he got there by the best route. When they go in, if you go somewhere without having sufficient information, you find yourself suddenly in front of a couple of steps. Then it is very difficult to find the access, especially if you are traveling alone. This software gives a lot of independence and freedom for someone who travels on their own. Back to Thessalonica, Nikos and George find the best routes to the restaurant. The software proves useful. Developers are already working on how to improve it. Major challenges had to do uh, to be able to localize the user with very great accuracy. You understand, if you have a blind user, you need to be as accurate as one meter in order to advise him where to turn, where to go. And there we have been able to go to three meters, two meters, sometimes one meter. We still hope to do better in the future with Galileo system. Another challenge ahead, providing users with simple, really accessible technology. We are speaking about users who are disabled and in many cases they are elderly. We speak about dyslectics, about illiterate people. These people can never work or in few, in few cases work with rich PDAs, with expensive devices and they don't know how to use really uh, even an SMS. So we gave a lot of effort to make a very simple user interface uh, running in chip devices. The system has worked. Nikos and George meet in the restaurant with the rest of the volunteers. After a whole day of testing the technology and what would normally be challenging for the volunteers, they at last have hope of greater independence in the future. <laughs>